Good morning everyone. Hi, I'm David Glazebrook, photographer based in the Blue Mountains for over 20 years. Today we're going to be using the new Godox MF12 macro flash to create some wonderful imagery. The Godox MF12 is powered by a lithium battery, giving you those fast recycle times. It's also got the extreme close-up positioning adapter for getting that light in super close. Then there's a colored set of gels and gel holder, though for my personal taste today, I'm not using those as I'm shooting a nature subject, but if I was shooting product or something like that, I'd certainly explore these for some really colorful uh, lighting um, possibilities. Then of course there's the cold shoe adapter for taking it off the ring and mounting on top of your camera or a small light stand like this or even a large studio version. The Godox MF12 is also available as a two light kit um, and they come in a 49, 52, 55, 58, 62, 67, 72 and 77 millimeter sizes to fit most lenses. Then there's a USB-C charging cable, soft pouch and of course the adapter ring offering 24 different positions. I've had six lights on here, so you can imagine the combinations and possibilities are just endless. With the extreme close-up positioning adapter, it's important that it's mounted correctly. You'll notice with its wedge shape that the narrow side has gone to the bottom of the light or the bracket side and this enables the light to be bent around uh, in super tight. So when you're looking to deliver that light to right up nice and close, this will enable that to happen for you. So when you're using your Godox trigger, note that with doing macro, we're working at very short distances and your trigger has a couple of settings in there for distance. Um, of course, with macro, we should be using the zero to 30 meter setting rather than the one to 100. Uh, we'll get much better reliability in triggering out of that setting. So here I'm adding a couple of lights to the adapter ring. The adapter ring has 24 unique positions where you can position your lights around the ring, making an extremely flexible, versatile piece of kit. Here I'm mounting six MF12s, all with the extreme close-up positioning adapter. This would be in a scenario where you needed to get the light in at minimum focus and you wanted that soft, even light right around your subject which you'll see here shortly we actually took the extreme close-up adapters off because i was able to dial down the lights here and just give this really nice even light note that the little tip here that is in focus is actually much smaller than a ballpoint pen but i felt like it really highlighted the tip here it was almost like something crumbed in bread crumbs and a little tip of jam or something like that just uh, a delicious photo nonetheless. I hope you enjoy it. And as I mentioned before, the extreme close-up positioning adapters, the slope of those is really important and how they really bring the light into those narrow spaces right in front of the lens. And I'm really close. I'm only probably less than 10 centimeters off the front element of my lens. So these are really important in achieving the shot. I also had the lights angled right in almost at their minimum here. The key point though that you've got to know about this is that the evenness of the light and that's what these adapters did here and it even softened the light to a point where I was also able to take my aperture down just a little bit because I really wanted you just to only look at the tips of the flowers here and enjoy the bokeh that was in the background to support the image here. So you also get a cold shoe adapter and this helps you to move it perhaps off the ring if you wanted to off the adapter ring. You could mount it onto the flash shoe of your camera but also there's a thread in the bottom of this that allows you to attach it to a light stand. Then you can take your lighting off camera to help supplement that that is on camera for much better design. And with all the various uh, groups and channels that we have out of our regular Godox triggers, this allows us to shape our light to create lighting ratios. 
and while I was shooting the Mountain Devil here, I decided to take one of the flashes and put it underneath the flash just to give it a bit of underlighting to take it away here. It was changing the plane of where the lighting is coming from. So I can have it on the ring, but if I can take it down and put it under the subject or behind the subject, this would give me different lighting effects. This is actually a five light shot. So there's four on camera evenly placed around the ring, gave us the nice even light around the front. But I also wanted one to light the background. So I took that off camera, popped it on the small stand uh, behind here to give me a real high key effect. Here you can see that I've just got one light on the ring at the moment. I'm just starting to explore the shot. I may be having the light on, off. I'll also be positioning the light in different angles because obviously the way the light is coming in to the subject affects what we're gonna get. You'll see in this example with the natural light shot that the main subject is underdone. You can see I've got some highlights in the background that aren't particularly attractive. So I turned the uh, one MF12 on that I've got and with a extreme close-up adapter, mate, that light coming over the top is just beautiful and soft. I can now take out those bright highlights out of the background and now I'm in control of the light. So here I've popped on a second light. Here too, also when I was uh, trying to shoot this particular subject, the wind was picking up, it was starting to bounce around. And so what I was reliant on was the fast recycling time of the lithium battery that is in the MF-12. When subjects are bouncing around, then obviously they're in and out of focus. And so sometimes you don't have a way of stabilizing it. So this is another uh, tool that you can use in order to try and capture that shot. Here I'm setting up a shot at home with a couple of emu feathers that I managed to find while I was out walking one day. Uh, they were actually stuck in some barbed wire on a fence line. And I found out from uh, some of my birding friends that these are feathers from the emu's rump, so I hope the emu's okay. I need to shoot them indoors because any puff of wind, whether even it's my hand going past the subject, will make these feathers bounce around. Here I've just taken a natural light photo to show you what it's like. In order for me to capture this subject, and it's, I only took this particular image at a 40th of a second, but I had to be at ISO 6400. And of course, there's the inherent grain that comes with higher ISO images. And so when I've got a nice light that I can get out of my MF-12, I can dial my ISO right back down to its native settings. And in this case, it's ISO 64, helping me get that really clean, crisp shot. So here I've decided to add a second light. Of course, when you start out shooting a subject, and it doesn't matter whether it be a macro subject or anything else, for me, it always evolves. And the shot that I may have preconceived rapidly changes, but you need somewhere to start. And so here adding a second light gave me an actual even light. It may look like there's more light coming from the right hand side, but that's only because the subject is lighter in color on the right hand side, and therefore looks a bit brighter, like reflecting more light back at us. And the benefit, of course, of shooting on a glass table is I can pop another light underneath here. I wanted a little bit more fill light. You can see how tiny these MF-12s are, and I just popped it on a stool here, set it underneath, and away I went. During summertime, I often walk my backyard and when I find dandelions growing in my backyard, I find the seed there, I pluck them off, I pop them in a container, and I just wait for when I need them and have a play with these. And these are fascinating subjects. I'm still at ISO 6400 and about a 30th of a second. And here with this soft natural light, it is window light. I've put a little bit of water on here just as an added element, but I'm looking for something a bit more spectacular. And as you saw before that other shot at ISO 6400, I'm indoors. I need to be able to focus though on my subject because of course with all macro, uh, your depth of field is razor thin. So from your trigger, you can pop on your LED modeling lights. 
and away you go. Find exactly where you want to be focused. Here in this particular shot, rather than sort of putting water all over the subject, I changed uh, my samples out here. Uh, I've just got a syringe here with a little bit of water in it, and this way I can precisely place a water drop, um, yeah, and therefore hero that within the image. And then after being so delicate with the syringe, it was time to uh, let the water bottle do its thing. So time to spray it up. Let's have a look and see what I can get. So you can see the actual bottom of the dandelion seed has got some really interesting textures as well. Here too, I stacked these images actually. So I started at the back and just took 11 slightly different focused shots here. And then I was able to stack them all together to give this end result. What do you reckon? I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. This MF-12 is so versatile. From a nice, hard, edgy light that can be placed anywhere around this ring to the extreme macro close-up adapter, giving that really good soft light. You can easily do this on or off camera. Thank you for tuning into this episode, and also be sure to like and subscribe for more tutorials. I'm David Glazer here in the beautiful Blue Mountains. I look forward to seeing you next time.